So next up, uh, we have uh, uh, Unmesh. Um, you know, Unmesh is a senior consultant for FinTech with IFSCA. Unmesh, he's had over 23 years of work experience spread across FinTechs, startups, venture capital investing, corporate banking, investment banking, manufacturing, uh, startup mentoring, and leading them. He's currently uh, working with IFSCA in the FinTech division. Previously, he was uh, with iCreate and GVFL, and he's also worked with various banking uh, institutions such as HDFC and Standard Chartered. Um, I think we might have made it a little bit difficult with uh, uh, supporting the regulator so much throughout in the morning for Unmesh, and he has to kind of now uh, share, you know, how they're, they're uh, kind of... Uh, I think IFSCA has grand, done great work, in, uh, and Sainzi and Ankit, uh, you know, they are also working with IFSCA. Uh, one of the most interesting value propositions potentially is yeah. that my Indian KYC will probably in future become valid for investment in Singapore or valid for investment directly in the US, right? And if that kind of potential solution works out, um, that would be something fantastic and it's already in the vision of IFSCA, but I'll, I'll let Unmesh take over. Thank you so much. Thanks, thanks, Shitej. Thanks for the introduction. And uh, as Ankit said, you know, this, uh, uh, the session on regulations uh, is always very boring. And, uh, you know, so this session basically Yeah, so when, when we have to talk about regulations, regulatory framework, uh, it's always uh, boring. And, uh, you know, this is the last session prior to lunch. And the good news is that I have a small presentation. So I think we can quickly wrap up and then proceed for lunch. Uh, what you see on your screen as a picture of Gift City, I think most of you would have seen it. And the reason why it's there is because we are based out of Gift City. Uh, just one introduction about Gift City. Uh, you all know it's a smart city. It's a global fintech hub now. Uh, there are two parts to Gift City. One is a domestic tariff area, which is like any other place in India, with some you know tax sub, tax exemptions and subsidies. And there is an international financial services center. Now, uh, what does this international financial service center means? Uh, it means that it's like a foreign territory within India from a FEMA perspective. Uh, there's a full convertibility of rupee there. Uh, all transactions, all businesses are carried out in foreign currency. There are no INR transactions there. Uh, this is like onshoring of an offshore jurisdiction, which means that it is at par with uh, doing business in Singapore, Dubai, or any other place, right? Uh, how does it happen uh, in order to enable that? The government of India has set up a unified financial regulator. <coughs> uh, that regulator is IFSCA. So how was it done? Uh, there was an uh, act of the parliament uh, called IFSC Act, which was passed in 2019. Through that, IFSCA has been established. Uh, the authority is mandated to do two functions. One is to develop the financial markets within the gift city, IFSCA, and we also regulate the financial markets within the gift city. Right? And therefore, in order to develop and regulate, uh, IFSCA has been vested with the powers of RBI, SEBI, IRDA, and PFRDA. So what it means is if you want to set up a bank uh, at gift IFSCA, you don't need to go to RBI for an approval. Uh, IFSCA is authorized to give an approval. Uh, like any other international IFSCA, we have a very competitive tax regime. Uh, there's <coughs> zero corporate tax. Uh, you can choose uh, the 10 years, you know, uh, as a tax holiday within the 15 years, uh, there is no MAT, there is no capital gains tax, there's no GST. So this is like, you know, being at par with any other international uh, IFSCA outside India. Sorry. So currently, we have licensed more than 350 entities, right? So which are operating out of the gift IFSC, and which comprises of banks, uh, Indian banks as well as foreign banks. Uh, we have uh, two international stock exchanges, a subsidiary of BEC and a subsidiary of NSE. 
uh, and related uh, ecosystem comprising of uh, clearing houses, depositories, brokers, etc. Uh, we have our own AIF guidelines uh, similar to SEBI's guidelines and therefore we have uh, funds, private equity funds, angel funds, family houses which are listed there. Uh, we have our own insurance uh, regulations and therefore we have Indian as well as foreign insurance companies operating out of GIFT IFSCA. And very interesting, you know, we have uh, some new regulations, right, uh, which, which we have put in place, uh, especially something called aircraft leasing and financing. Uh, there's something called International Trade Finance Service Platform, which is like uh, a TREDS platform in India, however, which deals with uh, export and imports. Uh, and the last is basically the FinTech uh, regulations that we have recently brought out. Uh, now, these are significant and important because we are perhaps one of the first regulator who have brought out a fintech entity framework and related regulations. And we are going to talk about this uh, in, in, in the next slides. Yeah, so how are we developing this uh, uh, fintech hub and what is the focus area, right? So uh, we are focusing on Indian fintechs who wants to go global. Uh, and how are we doing it? So we are giving them an authorization, right? So which is a recognition, right? So when they go to the international markets, uh, there is a credibility that you know, there is a regulator who's recognizing them. So that's the main purpose of uh, giving an authorization. Uh, <coughs> we are, as a regulator, we are building regulatory bridges with various regulators in the international markets. So when we refer them to a regulator outside India with an authorization, there is a lot of credibility and uh, you know, the access for a fintech becomes very easy uh, into other markets. <clears throat> you all know that you know, there are two success factors for a fintech to be successful globally, right? One is a connect uh, with the regulator and second is uh, to do a POC. POC is a proof of concept, right? Testing your product using live data, et cetera, right? So in order to enable this two uh, you know, key uh, sort of success factors, uh, we are putting this regulatory bridge in place with various regulators outside India. Therefore, in a way, we are like a launch pad for Indian fintechs who wants to basically glow in, go into global markets. We are also like a landing pad for foreign fintechs uh, who wants to come to India. As I said, this is a foreign territory. So therefore, we have bridges with the local regulators as well, right? So we work very closely with RBI, SEBI, IRDA, and any foreign fintechs wanting to come and work into India. So we help them you know, connect to this regulator. There's a mechanism called IORS, which is put in place very recently. And of course, the uh, fintechs who wants to come and work within the Gift City uh, campus where we have 350 plus entities. So th that becomes a very captive market uh, for the fintechs. So these three are the focus areas you know, uh, where we are trying to sort of uh, help the fintechs. Uh, how are we creating this? So there are six pillars. Uh, I spoke about the fintech bridges, right? So we have, cre we have created bridges with overseas regulators and the domestic regulators. Uh, there's a physical infrastructure already in place. Uh, we are working with uh, various incubators and co-working space which has been created there for the fintechs. Uh, we are also building an investor ecosystem by way of tie-ups uh, with domestic as well as international VCs. Uh, we already have our own AIF uh, you know, guidelines where uh, some VCs are already operational. Uh, Infinity Forum is our uh, flagship uh, event. Uh, we launched it last year. Uh, it was launched by the PM himself, and there were four partner countries, right? And it was received very well. More than 110 fintechs globally participated in the event. So this is an annual event. We keep, we'll keep doing it. So this is basically to, uh, you know, uh, create a mind share uh, globally for the fintechs, right? Uh, we, uh, we have also launched a series of hackathons. So basically five hackathons have already been launched. Two currently are in pipeline. Uh, so this is to, you know, uh, help uh, build a funnel for the context as well as uh, try and solve some of our problems. Uh, interestingly, we have uh, we are also uh, perhaps one of the first regulators who have brought out a fintech incentive schemes, right? So these are uh, grants available to fintechs uh, for various purposes, right? So we have to, today total of six grants, and we'll talk about it in detail uh, in the next few slides. And we have come out with a fintech entity framework where we under which we authorize and uh, you know recognize the fintechs. Uh, this slide talks about the uh, various uh, collaborations and network uh, that we have. I think you can skip this because we spoke about it. 
so these two are basically the regulatory rails, you know, the, the initiatives that we have come out with for the fintechs. Uh, uh, unique features about this regulation is that it recognizes fintechs as well as tech fins, right? Uh, we all know fintechs are basically uh, entities, you know, who uh, uh, who uses technology to launch various financial services. But tech fins are basically IT companies, right? So we have already we have we are also recognizes them because they provide uh, the backbone and technology. Uh, and uh, uh, their maximum revenue, you know, uh, comes from the BFSI segment, right? So, uh, in order to support tech fins, uh, we have also included them in our framework. And uh, how do we do it? So, there are two methods of, uh, you know, uh, uh, basically getting the recognition. One is the direct authorization, where mature fintechs can apply and directly uh, get a license or an authorization from us. And then we have a sandbox, right? So we have two types of sandbox where, uh, you know, they can apply and they can work uh, with the regulator uh, in the sandbox. Yeah, so this is uh, about the direct authorization route. Uh, and as you can see, you know, the mandatory requirements or the bar is very low, right? So the only requirement uh, here is that, okay, if you are an established FinTech uh, and uh, if you have uh, made revenues in the last 12 months, uh, you know, out of the last uh, 36 months, then you are eligible to apply. Uh, and uh, both Indian as well as foreign fintechs, right, uh, are eligible. and They can apply to us uh, 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 under the authorization, uh, you know, route. Only requirement here is that the applicant will need to then set up uh, a legal entity at GIFT IFSC after the authorization. bank account. So any uh, IBU, which is an international uh, banking unit within GIFT IFSC, they can open an account anywhere, which includes Indian as well as foreign banks. Yeah, similarly, uh, uh, you know, this is the sandbox approach, uh, where again, the bar is very low, right? So we are saying that uh, if you have an idea or a concept and you are building a product, uh, you can apply in our sandbox. The only mandatory requirement is that, of course, our technology has to be at the core of the product or, uh, you know, service. And Indian as well as foreign fintechs can apply. And one more, you know, uh, basically, uh, 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 here there is no restriction again uh, to come and uh, open a branch at Gift City. You can keep working virtually till the time the product or the service is sort of fully developed. Yeah, so that's the enablers that we have put in place. So we have two types of sandbox, you know, if, if let's say uh, uh, you, you are a fintech and the product is still not completely ready, right, and you, you need historical data to test the product and you need the support of the regulator, then you can come in our uh, innovation sandbox, right, so we will help you develop the product. Uh, and if your product is ready and, you know, you need to test it with live data, then we have the regulatory sandbox and you can apply under the regulatory sandbox, right. <coughs> Uh, the two other sandbox that we have is something called IORS, uh, which is like uh, uh, where IFSC works with the other regulators in India, right? Uh, RBI, SEBI, etc. And it's like a joint sandbox. Similarly, we have uh, joint sandbox with uh, international regulators as well, right? Uh, so basically, if you if you are an Indian fintech and if you want to sort of uh, work with MAS in Singapore, then under this framework, uh, you can actually apply. Uh, this is uh, the list of uh, <coughs> permissible activities, right? So there are two parts to it. Uh, one is uh, for the fintechs, right? So which basically, uh, sorry, this is a bit, uh, you know, the letters are not very legible, but uh, I'll just read out them for you. So um, for the fintechs, you know, it's basically the traditional banking or capital markets or the insur insurance uh, market products. If, if you are catering to these segments, then you can apply and as, as a fintech. And uh, the second uh, part is, is about the tech fins, right? So if, if you are a, a tech fin and you are uh, using any of these technologies, right? So uh, you could use AI, ML, uh, uh, biometrics, uh, digital KYC, D DeFi. We have also enabled uh, longevity finance, metaverse, and web 3.0. So if you are using any of these and providing support to any of you know, the BFSA segments, then you can apply uh, under the framework. Uh, 
uh, this slide talks about the incentives uh, which we have launched, right? So uh, we have six different types of in incentives starting from 15 lakhs uh, per fintech to uh, 75 lakhs. And uh, if you are a very early stage fintech, right, so you can avail the fintech startup grant. Uh, if you are in the sandbox and you want to do a POC, uh, there is something called a POC grant. Uh, we also have a sandbox grant, which also includes go to market, you know, kind of strategies and you want to sort of avail finance uh, for that. Uh, there is a grant for green fintechs, right? Uh, if you are a fintech and you are focusing on sustainable uh, or green finance, you can avail uh, funding under this grant. There is a grant for accelerators as well, so incubators and accelerators who wants to work with us and you know conduct uh, programs there or have a cohort, then you can actually uh, avail grants under that scheme. And then uh, for uh, successful large fintechs who wants to do uh, who wants to go for global listing, right? So there is a grant available for them as well. So these are the six different types of grants uh, that we have. So this actually brings uh, to the end of my presentation. Are there any questions and we can take care of it. Thank you.